I just uh, just turned it on, we, so it, we we are live. Okay, let me refresh real quick. Okay. And for those of you who are watching and you don't know, we're uh, getting things set up with the radio station WCVG, uh, thirteen twenty AM, one hundred three point nine FM, which is out of the Cincinnati Covington area. Uh, so if you have any friends in that area, uh, they can get a, a app, free app, tune in or a simple radio and they're able to listen to it through that app. Also, they can go to the website of the radio station, which is uh, uh, The Voice. All right, we're fixing to open your program. So okay. Ready? I am ready. Here comes your open. Okay. All right. Bye. I got you. All right. So you go ahead and start now. I guess that's a yes. <laughs> Get up, look up, live up. Let's talk about it. It's happening right now. Uh, as always, we want to thank you and uh, to give you uh, an appreciation, let you know that we appreciate, we're grateful that you allow this time, this specific time, for us to uh, fellowship so we don't take it for granted. Amen? Amen. So with that being said, I want to pick up where we left off last week. Uh, we, we opened up uh, part one of uh, message entitled words so this is words part two uh, spoken uh, thought written life uh, to me this is just what I've observed uh, people are very careless and reckless with their words uh, people are very inconsiderate with their words people understand the power and the intent and purpose of words so that's why I believe the Lord gave me uh, the message uh, words and it turned it into a two-part message. So we're going to share that today. Uh, so we're going to give honor to God who is our life. The Bible tells us it is in him that we live, move, and have our being. And it is from him that all blessings flow. Uh, I want to always acknowledge him in everything that I do. And I always want to acknowledge the uh, one and only. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, we have four scriptures that we're going to use for base scriptures. Uh, St. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 uh, from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 and from the book of uh, Timothy the second Timothy chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 and we're going to close out with Colossians uh, chapter 4 verse 6 if you didn't get them you know as I go through I'll repeat them anyway amen amen okay um, let, let's get into words part 2 Spoken, thought, written, life. All right? Uh, in, in, in the book of St. John, chapter 1, I'm reading from the King James Version. It says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it's important. Yes. It's important that we understand this. See, we were talking about words. Now we're talking about the Word. Okay, so that, that tells you something. What does that tell you? We're talking about the one who is the authority over words. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, this is what we're talking about. And who is that word? He's talking about Jesus Christ. He said, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. What are you saying? Jesus Christ made all things. God made all things. That includes you and me. That includes this earth. So by him having word, he didn't use just you know what we consider hands. He did it through the word. His word. Amen? Amen. Well, he said, let there be light. <laughs> there was power and authority in his word that, that commanded light to be. They commanded things to be, I watch this, out of nothing. So that's why he is the, he, he is the authority and the power. He has the ownership over words. Including your words. Mm. That, that changes things, doesn't it? In, in verse 4 it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, let's, let's go, I'm going to go back before we go down there. Uh, when it says, in the beginning was the word, uh, if you do any little research, they use the word logos. L-O-G-O-S. Logos. Okay? And, and, and this, it says, uh, articulate, uh, intelligent, that's, that's, that's some of the ways it describes it, right? The divine wisdom, this is the, from the dictionary, the divine wisdom uh, manifests in the creation, government, and redemption of the world and often identified with the second person of the Trinity, being Jesus Christ, right? 
God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. Uh, in the Bible, logos speaks to the intelligence. Uh, a word as expression of that intelligence, the articulate utterance of human language, it can be unspoken as a formulation of thought. Okay? And I, when I looked at these two, you have to go inside of what words mean. Words, well, I should say what words contain. Mm -hmm. Okay? When it's godly, when it's intelligent, when it's divine, uh, then it's going to contain love, it's going to contain power, peace and joy right it's going to contain uh, uh edification things that can be built up things can uplift it's going to contain correction it's going to contain all these things compassion empathy uh, encouragement when it's when it's the word that is spoken correctly uh, as, as as god intended as god intended amen amen so and I, 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 that's important. Why? Because I asked in, in part one, what do you use your words for? What do you use them for? Now, if you if you fast forward to where we are today, uh, current events, Russia has invaded Ukraine. After telling the world we're not going to invade, as they steadily built up troops, as they steadily built up weapons, no, we're not going to invade. And then he got to the point where he finally told the truth and told the world, "Don't interfere." So, what did he use? The, what did they use their words for? And specifically, talking about Putin, who's the, the the leader of Russia, he lied. He lied. He lied. All to do evil works. So, what did he use his words for? And to show you that he had power and authority in his words, even though it was evil, he built up over 150,000 troops to go into a, a place that is much smaller, much weaker to, to do damage. So what did he use his words for? Mm, my God. How much divine wisdom is in that? How much love was in that? How much peace and joy was in that? So listen, we have examples every day in front of us to show you, uh, to show us uh, if people are using their words as intended. And do they understand the word when they use their words? I, I hope I didn't lose anyone right there. Oh, I got to go. I got to go. Uh, let's go to the book of Genesis. Go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Book of Genesis, chapter 1. Go down to verse 20, starting at verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Let's look at that. Verse 26. And God said, he spoke to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, how he wanted to make us. He made us to have authority. He made to have dominion over, right? Through his word that he spoke, and so it is so. That's why we're not uh, in, you know, like the animals. We're above the animals. We're above the fish. We're above the birds. We're above all of his creation. Huh? Because he spoke it. And that's the way he designed it. But yet we're steadily fighting against one another when we are supposed to share in authority. Y'all miss that. This is why we're always fighting because we don't understand the order of God. You have people who want to rule because of color, people who want to rule because of class, people who want to rule because of evil and wickedness instead of understanding how God set it up. That's why the Bible made it very clear. On earth as it is in heaven, there's only one authority and we all are his servants and we have the power to, to, to serve. We have the power to, to obey. We have all these powers, but yet we use powers to kill, steal, and destroy. So what are they using their words for? Do they understand the power and the authority of the word? Are they in alignment with the word? God created us in his own way. He don't care about the what your, what, what, uh, what's wrapped around your spirit, meaning how much melanin you have or don't have, 
how much mixture have been going on with different ethnicities and cultures. There's still only one God and his word is still right. His word is still set. But yet we will not accept God's word, so we're out of alignment with his word. So we want our words to have the power and authority instead of understanding what the word says. Oh, my God. I'm not helping anybody right there. Amen. Hmm. And he, he gave them orders in 28. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Now, he didn't say subdue one another. He said, I need you to take control, watch this, of what I created for you. And make it produce. Mm, my God. Ah, okay. Um, let, 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 me, let me keep it moving. Let me keep it moving. If, if I can get you to see that. The, the, the next book that we're going to hit real quick. Uh, let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Starting at verse 6. From which some having swerved and have turned aside unto vain jangling, designed to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor what they affirm. But we know the law is good if a man use it lawfully. This is, what I, this is what the Lord intended for his word to be. This is what he intended for his, what his word to do. But yet, he said, we turned aside from it. That's another way of saying that we've become contrary. We have contradicted. We have gone against God. When you hear, when Jesus out of his own mouth said there be wars and rumors of wars, he, he, he's telling us, y'all going to keep fighting each other. That's why the Bible said man will destroy man. Why? Because he will not adhere to the word. So he'll understand the words he's supposed to speak. Hmm? So I, I put this out to some uh, young folks, you know, while I was at work. Uh, they was beefing and fighting at these gas stations. And, and you know, when I can get in there and, and minister or speak a word, I do. And this particular one, uh, it was some guys arguing and, you know, be, making a scene. Uh, some of them were young, some of them were not so young. And I started shaking my head. I said, this don't make no sense. So one of the guys, he was probably in his 40s, he said, what you talking about, Unc? And the other said, oh, gee, what you talking about? And that messed me up. We'll get back to that. <laughs> but um, I said, y'all don't understand what time it is. He said, what you mean, man? I said, what happened January 6, 2021? What you mean? I said, what happened on the Capitol? Oh, man, they went crazy. They were trying to take over the government. I said, yeah. I said, what y'all doing? I said, they trying to take over at the top while y'all killing each other down here on the bottom. I said, make that make sense. Mm -hmm. I said, make that make sense. I said, we're not using our words to even take over our own neighborhoods to learn how to establish banking, to learn how to establish food, to learn how to establish finances, to learn how to establish care for one another. I said, meanwhile, they're taking, trying to take over at the top. They're putting their people in position, judges, congressmen, uh, whatever. I said, what y'all doing down here at the bottom? Killing each other over what? Killing each other about what? Uh, we just had a five-year-old here in the city of Detroit last week that was shot in the face multiple times. Why? For what? These are the plans of the enemy. I want to take what the Lord said and pervert it. I want to take what the Lord said and twist it. I want to take what the Lord said and, and, and watch this cause you, his creation, to be contradictory to the word with your words. That's why I read for you in Psalms last week. It said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but my thoughts and my words are out of alignment. With the, and that's why I can't, that's why I, we cannot tap into the power, the authority of the word. Because we listen to the wrong one. He said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger, they will not follow. My sheep hear my words. And my words keep them in alignment with the word. And because they're in alignment with the word, they have this power, they have this authority, they have this peace, they have this joy, they have this prosperity, they have this favor, they have these blessings because they're in alignment with the word. So that the words that they hear and the words that they speak, the words that they watch, that they apply, the words that they practice, mm -hmm. 
gives them favor, gives them blessings, gives them healing, gives them deliverance, gives them all these things. You tell somebody it's in the word. It's in the word. So I ask the question again, how do you use your words? Mm. Do you use your words to get in alignment with the word? Do you allow the word to really be the head of your life? When I was going to Holy Prayer Way, uh, as, a, as, you know, young, as a young person, I stayed there until I was well into my 30s. And I eventually came, became the assistant pastor there under Bishop H.M. Harris and Queen, what well, we call the Queen. It was Pastor Elma Harris. And we always you know, talked about, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Mm -hmm. Always said that. Then you hear people doing testimony service, giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Yes, yes. If he's the head of your life, are you in alignment with his word? Mm. Well, well, well. <laughs> See, the things that come out of you, the things that come out of you, and we keep saying this over and over again, is a, repre a representation or reflection of what's in you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The things that come out of you is a representation or reflection of what is in you. That's why when you read the word, if you spend some time in it, you say, the Lord God, he looks at the inward parts. In other words, he looks at your heart. Yes. Jesus told the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, say, I know the thoughts. Yeah, I, I see what you, watch this, I see what you're saying when you're not even saying it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how much power he has. And he's given uh, certain people on this planet, on this earth, who can, who, when they get in your presence, they can pick up your spirit. Yes, sir. Y'all are not talking to me. See, he said, in, in the book of Proverbs and in, in other scriptures, it's about flattering lips. Mm. He said, yeah, yeah, but your heart is far away from me. Mm, mm. You're letting words come out of your mouth that's not representative of your heart because if they were, then they would be in alignment and you watch this, you'd be walking a different path. Come on now. Hmm? I, I, was, I got into a, a nice discussion with some people. We was talking about covenant. I'm going to be preaching a, a, a couple of messages on covenant. And you don't, and this is what I, need, this is what I need you to get to understand. When you talk about covenant, you talk about an official agreement between you and God. So, in order to stay in covenant with God, your words <laughs> have to line up with His. Because if you if you constantly lying, you're not in covenant. Mm. Right? If you commit adultery, you're not in covenant. If you're stealing, you're not in covenant. Because that comes from thought and things that's within you that makes it contrary. So if you're still fornicating, guess what? You're not in There are things that break the covenant. But he said, let us make man in our image. I, and watch this. When, he, when you accept Jesus Christ, when you repent of all, he says, he gave you a power. He gave you authority right then and there. Yes, sir. You have authority. And watch this. To give you an opportunity to become the sons of God. To become his children. That's why he said, my sheep hear my voice. My words, they hear. They hear my words. And what that means is, not only do they hear my words, they obey my words. Come on now. That's why I say, if you love me, you do what? You keep my commandments. Yes, yes. Hmm. So, what are you doing with your words? You have folks who brag about cussing folk out. Well, I checked him. I checked her. I told that fool. But I love the Lord. Hmm. But you can't stop cussing folk out. Go in the Bible and show me where Jesus cussed somebody out. Now, he laid hands on folks <laughs> when he was whooping them out the temple, but he didn't cuss them out. And there will be times when your speech um, will have to say things that are forceful, say things that you mean. In other words, there will be some times when, you, when it's time for correction. When you tell me, look, I'm not going to take that anymore. You're going to start talking to me like this or we're not going to talk at all. Guess what? I said, what I, well, I said exactly what I meant to say, and I know they understood it, but did I have to cuss them out? Mm -hmm. Ooh-wee! That, 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 that right there, right there, that right there. Yeah, I still done it respectfully, and it still keeps me in, in alignment with the Word of God, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Can we, but with the Lord still working on me? Okay, all right. How much work do you need? <laughs> let's, let's put it this way. Uh, for as long as you've been saying that, if you were seeing a plastic surgery, you'd be bankrupt by now. Mm-hmm. Because you wouldn't be in for it, Okay. 
So let, let's start with this. I told this what I told you last week. Every word that we say, we have to give an account to God for. Mm -hmm. Every word, every, every idle word. word. That's every what the scripture word. says. Every idle word. It's, it's, it's recorded. It is recorded. It's recorded in heaven. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. So when you go back and say, well, the Lord said, well, you turned from my word. That puts you in direct opposition to me. And the scripture says there's enmity between me and God. How do you remove that? You have to repent and change your words, change your thoughts. Can I help you out before we move? A lot of times it's what you're around. It's what you're around. And I'm, I'm going to throw this out there as an example. I did a message a few weeks ago called Kingdom Culture. Anybody remember that? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can you can go on uh, YouTube, Allen Impact Ministry on YouTube. You can pull that one up or go to our page, Allen Impact Ministry. We talk about culture, and uh, they kept hyping the super time. I mean, the Super Bowl halftime show kept hyping it, hyping it, hyping it. No matter where you look, you saw trailers, you saw commercials, hyping it, hyping it, hyping it. And then came the actual performance of the Super Bowl halftime show, and people, oh man, oh man, woo woo woo. Then you had people who who were you know in opposition of it. And I looked at it and I was like, and I remember being, uh, you know, in a certain age group, some of the stuff I listened to, I did. But I made a decision a long time ago to stop listening to a lot of it. Because of what the message was in the music. Hmm. Got it? But yet, you still have folks in my age group and older <laughs> who still listen to this music that can, contains the wrong messages. And when you start singing it, uh, they say what's rehearsed in your hearing dominates your thinking. thinking. And if it's dominating your thinking, then you got to say it back because that's what's on your mind. Certain movies, songs, you know, you know people, what's rehearsed in your hearing dominates your thinking. thinking. So you keep repeating the same old thing that's wrong. And next thing you know, you're doing the things that are wrong. And it started with Words. That's why we go back to the Bible and say, you have to meditate on me day and night. Man should always pray. Right? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my... Why? Because I don't want anything around me to affect my speech between me and God. Oh, y'all mm -hmm. missed that. If I need, my, I need my speech to line up, then I have to remove certain things. Come on now. Certain people. Hmm. If I uh, how well, I put this way, how important is it to you, uh, to knowing that every word that you speak uh, is going to come up before God? How important is it to you? Certain things, certain people, uh, habits. What well, habits have to be broken? People have to be changed. People have to be removed. Things have to be changed. Things have to be removed, deleted, whatever. Why? Because it has to. It should be more important to you and your soul. To be in alignment with the word of God. Does that does that, that make sense to anybody? Amen. Even some places where you worship, and you know they're not preaching right, they're preaching the doctrine. Oh Lord. That's 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 what it is. The Bible tells us, uh, I'll say it this way: just because it says church on the outside, don't mean church going on on the inside. Oh Lord. That's 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 fact. We can pull up scripture after scripture, and I'll show you. That's why Jesus whipped them out the temple. He said, my place should be called the house of prayer for all nations. Mm -hmm. He said, you made it into a den of thieves. My, in other words, my word is not going on here. Th th what my word means is not going on here. The content of my word has been perverted in this place. Jesus. That's what he was telling, That's what he was telling them. Ain't no souls being saved here. Ain't no souls being delivered here. No healing is taking place here. Uh, no breakthroughs are happening here because of my word is missing from this place. Mm. That's what he was telling them. So what do you use your words for? Huh? That was the intent of the word. Mm -hmm. you, the word created, the word empowered, the word healed, the word delivered, the word saved, the word uplifted, the word encouraged. He did all these things. What do you use your words for? Wow. That, that, that's To me, that's an awesome thought. And I know somebody said, well, that's kind of deep. Actually, not really. If you just take some time in the Word. It's not that deep. 
it, for some of us, if you like me, it took some time to understand it and figure it out. And then it took some time to apply it. Tell somebody, but we got there. Amen. We got there. So with my speech, uh, let's get back. Let's get back. I got to hit a couple of more. We only got a couple of minutes left. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to uh, Colossians uh, chapter 4 and 6. We're getting there quickly. Chapter 4, verse 6. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how to, how ye ought to answer every man. Let's, 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 let's go back. Last week we said, uh, be slow to speak. <laughs> Why? Because my speech always has to contain something. Mm -hmm. What it has to contain is Jesus Christ. What it has to contain is peace. What it has to contain is joy. What it has to contain is edification. What it has to contain is wisdom. What it has to contain is love, compassion. It has to contain these things. Why? Because that shows who I am. That shows who I serve. That shows what I believe. That shows what I stand on. So let my speech, let the words that come out of my mouth always be with grace. And seasoned with salt. Hmm. So I can provide the right answer to every man that I give an answer to. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Now sometimes it's best not to say anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to have wisdom to, to understand. But some folks, I got to say something because I ain't no punk. I got to say something because I ain't going to let them have the last word. I got to say something. Do you? <laughs> There's if, no if, written law saying that. If, if your speech can't be, your speech uh, won't have grace at that particular time and be seasoned with salt, you might want to be quiet. It may be best just to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not saying anything is more powerful than saying anything. Hmm? Sometimes not saying something is more powerful than saying anything. Yes, yes. Did that, did that, did that help anybody? Well, the Lord's still working on it. Well, let them work. But mean it. Mean it. If you want the word to work, the, the Lord to work on you, say, Lord, work on me. I mean it. I come to you humble knowing that I've, I've said things that I should not say. You know, I've done things I should not. Lord, work on me. I need you to work on me. Yes, I surrender to you. I am the clay and I need you to be the power. I'm, I'm, I'm voluntarily putting myself on the wheel so you can work me. Mm -hmm. So you can reshape me. For, watch this, from the inside out. Amen. What you mean? My mind, my heart. I I'm giving it to you. Go back to what the Bible says. You must love the Lord your God with what? All. Oh. All your what? All of your heart. All of your mind. All of your soul. All of, all of your being. You got to love him with all that. So give it to him. So I need you to change me. I think it was Tamla Man who sang that song, right? Change me, O Lord, or change mm -hmm. me, O God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We all need to be changed. We all need to be changed because our speech, our speech is either condemning us or it's going to allow us to make it to the next level in Christ. So if you know you, you, your speech is not right, hasn't been right, and I want to help you out. Uh, if I go over a little bit of time, like I said, you can always catch this in its entirety. Uh, on YouTube, Allen Impact Ministries, or on our Facebook page. But I want to help you out because this has been a big debate that's been raging and raging and raging and has come to an head. And that debate is this. People don't want to believe what the Bible says. But the Bible told us there will be times like this. If mm -hmm. you ever read it, where men should become lovers of themselves. Won't endure sound doctrine. And will not endure sound doctrine. They will not endure the speech. They will not endure the words. They will not endure the preaching and teaching. They, they, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They're so he told to us to preach here. in season and out of season. So right now, this is the part where we hear the time. We're out, out of season. season. Y'all not talking to me. Yes, sir. Huh? And the Bible, and people tell me, well, the Bible has been edited. The Bible has been uh, misinterpreted. The Bible isn't translated properly. And these are folks who never studied the Bible. Never studied it. They're regurgitating error 
from and, somebody else. And falsehoods from someone else. The, the conspiracy theories. Everybody want to attack the Bible. Think about that for a minute. Hmm. And that's the only true thing that they have. But they haven't studied it. They haven't got up under somebody who broke it down to them. I just don't want to hear the truth. And this is why they're not free. This is why they're bound. The truth shall make you free. free. The lies bind you. Bind you. Lie, lies restrict you. Mm -hmm. And this is why their thinking is so limited because of all the lies. But there's a word that can free them. That's right. Oh, my right. God. Y'all got, got this. Jesus said it himself. He said, he gave them an invitation. He said, come unto me, all. That's it. Who are heavy laden. And I will. He said, come unto me. Learn of me. Come on now. Take my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, I will give you rest. That's what he said. So watch this. If somebody was false, why would they give you an invitation? Mm. Y'all need to get that. Yeah, if I'm if I'm if I'm having this massive party, and I give you an invitation, how do you know I'm not having a party if you don't come? Mm. Wow. Oh, he ain't doing that. No, that. Did you go? No. But I know he ain't doing it. Did you go? No. <laughs> so you spoke something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. You speaking something you don't understand. Come on now. Your words. That's it. What are you using them for? Mm. Look, I, I, we went over our time again, but listen, I, I, I want, there's so much more I can do in this, but I pray something was said or done that helped you, that blessed you, that encouraged you, if nothing else gave you some more understanding. And if it did that, please, share the message. It doesn't cost you anything to share. Tell somebody that what, what time we come on, uh, how, they can, uh, how they can view or listen. That will help this ministry uh, to do what we purposed it to do. And what is that? We want to spread the gospel around the world. That yes, is our goal. Amen. Not my words, but the words of Jesus Christ. You can help us do that. Amen. Second thing, keep us in your prayers because we're always praying for those who listen to, listen to us and follow along with us. Amen. Amen. Third thing, sow a seed. We don't tell you how much to sow. That's between you and God. But we encourage you to do so. How can you do that? Two ways. Allen Impact Ministries. We're on Givelify. And we're also on... Uh, What's the other one? Cash App. Cash App. Elder AE on Cash App. Elder AE on Cash App. Allen Impact Ministries on Givelify. And until the next time, we pray God's biggest, best, and boldest blessings upon you and yours. And remember this. Your words have worth. They have value. They have power. So choose them wisely. Choose them wisely. Be careful with your words. May God bless you.